Welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and today I've got Kim Barrett on the show. We're going to be talking about marketing, going down the rabbit hole. There's so much that we can learn as entrepreneurs in, in terms of improving our messaging and our branding and everything. So welcome to the show. Really excited to have you here. Absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for the audience? Just maybe a quick background, your favorite color, you know, <laughs> anything you feel will be relevant. Favorite color is red, uh, first port of call. So I'll get that, the hard question out of the way first. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, my name's Kim. I own a company called Your Social Voice over here in Perth, Australia. So pretty much the uh, opposite side of the world. Yeah. And yeah, for the last seven years as a company, we've really delved deep into online advertising, specifically Facebook advertising. Like I've been doing online marketing myself for about 15, 16 years now, Okay. but the Facebook side of things when it first came out and the social side of things was like really what interested me because there was so much more ability to target people based off what they were actually doing. And, you know, now that we know a lot of these, uh, uh, releases that have come out about what they've done with our data, you know, whether it's good or bad, but as a, as a business owner and a marketer, it was, it was definitely very, very useful. So yeah, we've been doing that for the last couple of years. And I travel around the world speaking about marketing and, and digital advertising when it comes to Facebook ads, Instagram ads, um, they're, they're my main jam. And then like, how do we actually, you know, not just get attention on social media um, while some people like that, but how do we actually generate more leads more engagement, more sales, and then actually, you know, grow a business uh, predominantly using digital is, is my is my core focus. Absolutely. So what, how did you get started in that? Did you just become interested or did you just decide, let me check this out and see how it goes? I'm always curious to see how people got into, you know, what they're doing now. So for me, uh, so back in the day before Facebook happened, and um, you you might remember, and some of the listeners might remember, there were forums, right? So if you had a specialty topic, it's not like you went into a Facebook group. There was a actual forum you went on on the internet, and there was like threads, and all the information was there. So I was back in the day a um, fish breeder. So my dad and I had like tons of aquarium fish, tropical fish, and we would um, breed them, sell them, um, all that sort of stuff as a bit of a pastime and a hobby. And I was on a forum. Um, and I was answering people's questions because I had, a, you know, I was only 15, but I had a bit of experience like with the uh, fish and we were breeding different types and answering questions, helping people out. And they made me a moderator. Then they made me an admin of it. And they said, but look, Kim, we, even though we're getting all this traffic and we're growing, like we have costs, we have to pay for the server hosting. We have to pay for all the bandwidth that we use. We have to try and like bring in prizes so we can keep members, all this sort of stuff. Um, and I said, okay, so how do we get, people like what, what do we need like we need sponsors we have like a just one bar at the top of our website and we can have 10 sponsor names and logos there that would link to their website and i was like all right so why would people pay us money for that and they're like well we've got you know tens of thousands of people every month coming to our website that are their ideal audience so if they're coming here we've got something that would be a benefit to them you know that's that that's why they would pay us and i was like all right send me the information. So there was like a, just a dashboard on the back of our website. And I just took a screenshot, put it into like I think Microsoft paint at the time, probably. And then just put it like a little bit of text around it. And I was like, this is like our traffic. And I went on Google and Googled fish stores in Australia, online store fish stores in Australia, and just did a BCC to every single store, got all these email addresses and sent them an email saying, Hey, look, we have this much traffic. Here's a screenshot. We have 10 spots available for 10 providers to be able to jump on and have core sponsorship spots on here. The cost is $4,000 for the year in either cash or prizes giveaways. Um, here is our PayPal link. I'm sending this email to 50 different stores. So um, the first 10 are going to be the ones that can get it. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know at the time that I was using like a whole bunch of like marketing psychology Seriously. and things like that in the actual, <laughs> yeah, all, all those avenues when I was actually writing it. I was like, oh, like I was just like, because it was truthful. It's not like I was manipulated. It's <laughs> it like, was real yeah, we can, the, the websites, <laughs> yeah, the website only has 10 spots. I was sending it to 50 people, although they were all BCC'd. And I sent the email off at like 10 o'clock at night before I'm getting up for school the next day. And then I woke up the next morning and I was like, they're like, well, Kim, what? Um, they sent me a message on um, MSN Messenger. I was just dating it very well. They're like, hey, what, what happened? What did you do last night? And I was like, oh, why? What happened? They're like, oh, we've got all these emails back and we've got like $40,000 in our pay uh, PayPal account from Sweet. all of these people that want to basically take up this sponsorship opportunity. I was like, 
I was like, this is great. I was like, awesome. So that's really, then I was like, so people on the internet will pay money to get attention from more people on the internet. Um, and that's kind of what opened my eyes to the whole world of online marketing when it was like, cool, we were selling, which I didn't know at the time. I was like, well, cool, we're selling banner ads, which is a placement on there. And they were paying for it because it was cheap based on the cost per impression and how many people were coming through. So mm -hmm. um, that really just opened my eyes up to like what the internet marketing world was. Um, the, um, a real world, you know, a billboard, a uh, um, TV and radio and things like that. And that's really what kind of like sparked my interest the most was being involved in that from a very, uh, very early age at 15. I was like, oh, there's, there's ways to make money online that I probably didn't know about before. Yeah. And the funny thing is you started to just take action. So you didn't even realize of the scarcity or like a countdown timer, all these different things that we hear about now. I'm actually rereading. Funny enough, you probably read this one. Um, Traffic Secrets, Russell Brunson. I have read this one before, the founder of a uh, co-founder or founder of ClickFunnels. And he talks about that, you know, back in the day, there were the forums. And of course, now we've got Facebook groups and there are still some things like Reddit. But a lot of people are in Facebook groups and on TikTok and on Instagram, right? Things have changed slightly, but the ideas and the mm -hmm. psychology and some of the tactics maybe are applicable across platforms. And so you specifically focus, you said Facebook and Instagram have been your primary advertising like focuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we mainly focus on those just because they have the same back end. They have the same um, ads management uh, platform. Right. And like we dabble in a little bit, like we do a little bit of stuff on, on Twitter promo. We do a little bit of stuff on um, on YouTube and Google. But what we're best known for is is definitely Facebook and Instagram because slightly different conversations you have to have on different platforms. Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook are somewhat similar. So that would just kind of made sense for us to double down and just, you know, really focus on one key area. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so how how did you really go about learning? Did you go through, I mean, have you taken a bunch of courses? Did you go to all the seminars? Did you go through the Facebook ads manager class? Like, it, it just seems like one of those things that there's not really a resource. I'm sure there's classes on uh, Udemy and Skillshare at this point, but back in the day, I mean, you said you've been doing this for for over a decade. How did you really get started? I mean, I'd love to hear, was there a book that you read? Were you like a Dan Kennedy fan? anything like that yeah i mean the uh, definitely from the from the ability to articulate and interact with people like copy and things like like, like that like dan kennedy eugene schwartz jay mm -hmm. abraham like best like admin you know uh copywriting men like they're all, they're all the greats but the technical side of it was really not a non-existent and it's kind of very heavily morphed over time. So now if someone's going in, it's like, like, you know, we sell courses on it. Facebook have their own blueprint course themselves. There's like a huge range of education you can get on it. But at the time yeah. when it first came out, there wasn't, it's not like you could just be like Google, like how to run Facebook ads. And then there's like 65,000 YouTube videos on it. It's like, oh, <laughs> only a handful full of people were, were doing it. And it used yeah. to be as well, because now it's obviously evolved. It used to be, there was only that right hand column on the side and only on your desktop. There wasn't anything for mobile. And it was only on that right hand side where there was a few images that you could really play with. So it was very limited. And um, the, the user interface on it was very limited as well. So a lot of it was trial and error. And then people started to do little, micro courses on it which was really cool so just to learn the technical aspect because yeah the the psychology the all the other avenues it's like you can learn that from from the grades you go and get books of um uh claude hopkins on eugene schwartz on dan kennedy on all the guys that have like you know come before from the direct response avenue and um i definitely went down the route and got mentors in all those spaces and um joined masterminds and things like that to get uh, deeper knowledge on that but from the technical standpoint it was a lot of trial and error and, and even today like there's people at Facebook um, like we are very lucky we have a direct rep at Facebook because we manage a fair amount of spend mm -hmm. so we have a direct rep that we can speak to and even I ask them questions and I'm like cool so why is this happening like this and like this versus like this which makes more sense to me and he's like I don't know He's like, you, you know more about this than me <laughs> we, we spend all day in there doing stuff and, yeah. you know so there's most um most advertisers if they're doing stuff online are, are probably spending more time on the tools than people at facebook because even your marketing representatives like they're there to talk to you about marketing and business growth and goals and spend they're not setting up an ad 50 times a day 
right. which a lot of people running running agencies and things like that are doing. So, yeah, it's a, a little bit of a disconnect from that standpoint. But yeah, it's a lot of even as I say, even today, still still trial and error. It's still like testing and then measuring. Like, oh, that broke. That didn't work. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's just getting your hands dirty, which is like with any business, it's like the more time you spend understanding the platform or avenue that you're working on, then it's like you you just get good at it over time. You know the the old ten thousand hour principle is definitely a hundred percent applicable. Yeah, I love what you said there because so many times entrepreneurs, myself included, we're looking for the hack, we're looking to outsource and delegate everything, and it is humbling to hear from time to time. It's like the shortcut is the work. You have to get your hands dirty. You have to, you know, learn learn how the tools work and actually get in there. And it's also funny how you mentioned that you you guys know more than you know the Facebook ads manager person that's your contact because they're not setting up 50 ads a day. And so that was the Eureka moment I had with a friend earlier when we we're trying to figure out social media, like, hey, how do we grow our following? You know, what's working? How do you find what's resonating and going more viral than something else? And ultimately we kind of determined like we just have to keep doing this after we post. 500 times, we will have data that we can review. We can't just sit here thinking about what the perfect post is. We actually have to do the work and create the content and, you know, maybe model or funnel hack other people's content as well. So that's a very powerful message. You just got to get your hands dirty and do the work. I know it's not what people want to hear, but that's, that's what it takes. Yeah. And and like you said there, most people do, and I I call it marketer brain where you're sitting there and you're like, Oh, what's going to be the perfectly crafted ad and like the perfectly crafted headline and things like that. And it's like, it's, it, it, there isn't one. And most, most marketing is like, I was speaking to a guy um, uh, yesterday and we were talking about it, content marketing. And and he's like, you can't test and measure and no one can tell you immediately what the ROI is going to be on it because you can only assess it after it happens. Right. So it's like you have to do it. Then you can be like, oh, how amazing is when we do a video post, we get 10,000 new followers. When we do this, we get that. It's like, but you can't assess it beforehand. It's like you've got to be willing to do it. Same as your accounting. You get to the end of a quarter and you're like, oh, cool. This is what our the remaining profit was. This is how, what we did well, what we didn't. The From a content marketing perspective, you've got to do the same. Direct response like lead generation slightly different because obviously immediately we can get results. We can see results. We know mm. what's happening and what's working. But when you're putting out content and you're trying to grow uh, organically and drive organic growth, it's like you just got to do it and then be like, oh, okay, you know, one year in, this is what the results were. Like same as having a podcast. It's like you can never tell how many viewers you're going to get until you go and promote it and do it for a year. And you're like, oh, this is how many viewers we had last year. <laughs> right. And then that's counterintuitive too, because so many times we want to know what the outcome is going to be. We want some reassurances and we want to have an idea that, hey, if we do all this work this is going to happen, but that's the unfortunate thing, but also the positive thing with entrepreneurship. It keeps people from, it sometimes takes, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone to really do things that you're not sure if it's going to pay off. It's the most frustrating thing to commit to a three-year podcast. You know, I've been doing it for four years now, and I'm sure you've been, you've been at this for some time as well. And it's just frustrating at first when you're like, gosh, this is a lot of work. It's taking a lot more time than I expected. And I'm not seeing the numbers, you know, I don't have a million downloads a month, you know, what's going on. But then as you start to do it, I like the example, like you said, accounting, it's like you get to the end of the quarter, you review all your numbers. And while you're trying to do some planning and be proactive, really, that's, you have to go through the motions and get the data in order to go back and and analyze it. It's, It's like a chicken and the egg situation, you know? 100% hundred percent. And like, uh, like you were saying there, it's like the consistency over time is really what kind of yields it and grows. And especially when it comes to online, because there is a huge um, availability and, you know, propensity to compare ourselves to other people. Mm-hmm. Like you mentioned, like a million, a million downloads or whatever it might try and be a goal to get for your podcast. It's like for most people, if I said to you, let's just say that you're getting 10,000 downloads an episode. If I said, cool, every week I'm going to put you in a room with 10,000 people and you can You'd speak to happy. them. <laughs> most people would freak out and they'd be like, oh my God, like every this week for free and I can say whatever I want. And then it's like, oh, but your podcast only gets, you know, 10,000 downloads. They're like, oh, only 10,000 like you know like Chris gets Chris gets 10 million (laughs) yeah like so it's uh it's always funny the same online like oh my ad's only been seen by a hundred thousand people I'm like that's a hundred thousand people are human beings like all my videos 
he has only had 20,000 views. It has a shoot video. Like, it's like when you look at digital, because it's not like person to person, I stood there and I could see 10,000 cars drive past my billboard. It becomes a little bit, um, get, you get like a little bit desensitized and you're like, oh, I want this, this, and this. And it's like, well, hang on. The very fact that you've done this is pretty epic. Like the other day I launched a um, Twitter profile just to test some Twitter ads. And I got it from zero to 11,000 followers in two weeks. And I was like, Whoa. but I really want to get to, get to like 20,000 followers. And then one of the guys in my office like, it's like, you have 11, you got 11,000 like real followers in two weeks. And I was like, yeah, Amazing. but I wanted 20. And he's like, he's like, you have 11,000. And I was like, yeah, actually that's pretty, like, it's pretty good. <laughs> I shouldn't be complaining about that. So it's just, it's always like that um, ability because when you're shooting for big things and entrepreneurs, you know, dream big and, and want to shoot for big things. It's uh, sometimes you've got to reel yourself back and go, oh, well, actually it's like, you know, it's, it's actually doing much better than expected. Yeah, that's a great tip as well as just imagining those people in a room because that's when things change. I mean, it's easy to say, well, that person gets 10 million downloads a month or a million downloads a month or even 100,000. But imagine having those that amount of people in a room, 5,000, 10,000. Most people, like you said, they'd be ecstatic to have that kind of exposure, be able to say whatever you want, post as frequently as you want, and people still listen to the content. Like your loyal followers will listen to it all, whether you post three times a week or just once. Exactly, 100%. And that's why it's like every, I think it's like you've got to try and be, and like if you, if you, I, I always thought it's like if you, like instead of views, if you had people's faces, like people would be like ecstatic. It's like if you saw all the faces of people that would rather be than cool. just like, oh, seven, 700 likes, you know, everyone would be like, oh, wow, like this is like, that's cool. Like I think Twitter started doing with their spaces, like even though they're all different profile pictures and most people on Twitter don't really use a lot of their faces in some communities it's um but you can see all of the profile things that are like joining into a listening to a twitter space and it's like well wow like that actually brings back a bit of that real world interaction it's like okay there's actually a hundred of these people and there's their faces or their profile pictures tuning in to see what um what someone's going to say yeah that's what's cool about uh, clubhouse i haven't been in it as much lately but i like the you see all the faces in there and you can scroll down and you're like, geez, there's a lot of people in here. They do a lot of different things. And then you can click in and get an idea of who they are. But it gives more perspective instead of just being on a Zoom call where maybe a bunch of people are hidden. You can physically see the pictures and understand that there are a lot of people listening into the conversation. So that's a cool way as well. Do you have any tips for marketers that are maybe maybe struggling with even setting a goal? Is there like a good goal to set? How do you even set goals in marketing? Yeah, I mean, the big one is like I'm a huge fan of reverse engineering because, again, and anytime anyone asks me and like they, I frustrate my clients, I have a mastermind, I frustrate my masterminders because they always go, Oh, I want to do this. And I was like, Okay, great. So, like, why are we doing it? What's the actual goal? And then they always get pissed off and annoyed. They're like, Oh, because like, you always want to ask me what the, I'm like, Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, Well, there's like, it's like me going and jumping in a car and you asking, like, Where are we going? And I go, I don't know. And then we just drive off. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's not really like, that's not going to work. Like we're going to get stuck pretty quickly. Yeah. And so for most people, I go, so, so what is it like? So whether it be organic, whether it be following, whether it be revenue, it's like, what specifically is the outcome that we want to achieve? When do we want to achieve it by? And then we can lock in and look at what are the ways that we're going to actually be able to achieve that? Whereas most people just go, oh, I want to shoot for 10,000 followers. I'm going to do this for this. They, they just they just start going without actually having a specific goal in mind. Or I want to make a million dollars. Cool. Like, why specifically do you want to make a million dollars? Mm-hmm. So, what do I make a million dollars? Great. What do you actually want to spend a million? Like, if I give you a million dollars now, what do you want to spend that money on? This, this, and this. Great. That doesn't cost a million dollars. So, why a million dollars? Oh, maybe I don't want that. And so, it actually allows people to actually bring in and get clear on what they actually want need and and should be having from their business because most people when they start a business they haven't really had enough experience in um i don't, don't want to say the real world but they haven't had enough experience to know what's like well it is my own business i can set my own goals and i can set my own outcomes so like, if we can actually be very specific about what do we want and why and how we're going to get there then we can actually reverse engineer the steps from there like many people like guy was um caught up with a few friends the other day and I told them that I got a Range Rover for free. They're like, what do you mean you got a Range Rover free? I was like, well, I got a, I got a Range Rover for, for free. My goal was this year to get a new Range Rover Sport, which I got. And I didn't want to have to pay cash out of my pocket for it. So I, I figured out a way to get one. But if I just said I want a Range Rover, 
there's several different ways you can get one. You could go hire one, you could go buy one, you could go lease one. Um, you could put down all the cash up front and just purchase it outright. There's like several different ways it could happen. But I knew that I wanted to get one. I didn't want to pay any money out of my pocket for it. Um, and I wanted to use it so I could use it as an example in my teaching and education side of things that I do. And I was able to do it by exchanging different form of currency, by the value that I provide to other people. I provide someone enough value where they were willing to then take out a lease on a Range Rover and I get to drive it. I don't pay anything for it, but I provide them value in other ways. So by knowing what my goal was, I was able to reverse engineer and then go great of clients that I have of people that I know who is looking for the value that I have and can provide. Great. Who would have the means necessary to be able to pay for that um, hire? These people. Awesome. Like, let me approach them and find out if they're on board with a deal like that and just so happened that they were but if i just said i want to make a million dollars then i can go and buy a new car and buy a new house well now i've taken the car i don't have to buy a car so i don't have to pay for it buy a house why, why specifically would i want to buy a certain house in my city right now do i actually want to do that and what's the actual cost because everyone goes a oh, house costs let's just say uh, in australia minimum 500 grand that car costs 150 grand so I need 650 grand. It's like, well, no, what's the repayments on that? And then what does your business need to be bringing in to enable you to have the income to pay for those things and then also um, live and where you want to live? Like do you, how many times a week do you want to eat out? Asking all these questions to yourself to actually figure things out. Then you actually have a tangible plan. Whereas most people don't want to set a tangible plan and have a tangible goal because right. that means that they can fail. It's like, I now that. I have that's something so specific, I can fail. And that's, that's the big problem with entrepreneurs. It's like, we'd all be much more successful if we just followed the simple proven path of every single person before us. And did it. But if we actually figure out exactly what we need, then we can never fail. But if you can never fail, you can also never succeed. So, so it's like catch 22. Yeah, that is a catch 22. But like what you said there, I mean, just goal setting in general is extremely important and understanding that you've got to back into it. And a lot of times we set goals just because it sounds cool or because we're, pressure to thinking, you know, a lot of people want to be a millionaire by 30. That was one of my goals too. I'm like, Oh, I want to be a millionaire by 30. Why not? And, and I never stopped to ask myself, why do I want it? Or what would I do with the money? Or do I even need a million dollars to live my dream life? Right. And how much more cash flow instead of just hitting a certain number, like what does your business need to be bringing in consistently to fund your ideal lifestyle? Uh, I think Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week calls it TMI, like your total monthly income number. Like, what is that number in order to sustain your dream life? And that changes it entirely. Uh, maybe you don't need a million dollars or $10 million. You only need $20,000 a month, which I know I say only some people listening may be like, only, what are you talking about? But, you know, once you scale up, that's really a small drop in the bucket of what other people are making in this space. Um, and you can live a pretty amazing life for $20,000 a month, 30,000. Can't even imagine like, 10 million a month or something, right? Like, what would you spend it on? <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, that's and that's it's crazy. And as I say, that's the thing is like, then you can assess and be like, great. Because then as well, people go, well, they start making a little bit of money and then they're like, oh, like property, crypto, stocks, all this different sort of stuff. Right. Again, and they go and jump in without a, without an actual goal. That's like, I started my, I have a newborn niece who's like eight, eight weeks old. So I've got a... Um, build her a crypto portfolio it's like another like side passion of mine um, cool. is that space and i was like just build it and like figure out a way to farm some yield and grow the portfolio for her and it's like within if my predictions are correct which i believe them to be true over about six and a half years seven years she'll probably have a, a million dollar portfolio from that before she's even the age of 10 um but it's because i know what I want to achieve, like what I want to help achieve with her portfolio. I know what my starting value is. I know what I can add to it. I know how I can help it get there and like the avenues that I can take. So it's easy to be able to predict. And then from that perspective, like for, for her, it's like, it will be easy for me to then to put that into something that gets her 10% per year, which is a hundred grand. So before she's the age of 10, she could have an asset that could produce her a hundred grand a year. And it's like, that's, that's pretty amazing for a 10 year old to be able to have and then it's like oh what do you actually then it's like what do you actually want to do because it's like if all, all your expenses are pretty much covered at, you can like, do what you really on, want as you said 20k a month 100 200 200 grand a year you can, like unless you're living like lavish like that pretty much covers a pretty decent living yeah. that includes a few holidays that's like you can you're not really worried about money and it's like 
from there, then it's like, yeah, what do you actually want to do with your time and what would keep you busy? Like one of my um, um, team members is head of my sales team asked me the other day, he's like, man, if you're doing so good with crypto, like, why don't you just do that full time? And I was like, but I like what I do. Like I, I would get up every day and do this stuff. It's do like, it's free. fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and you know, we, during COVID and stuff like that, we did, we, we worked on quite a few clients um, for free kind of pro bono style because it's like, well, I had all this extra time because I can't, literally couldn't leave the house here in Australia. Right. And like these people need help. Like, let me, like, I may as well do something that's going to be good and good value and be, and help people. So let's just roll with this. And um, yeah. And it's like, I loved it. It was still fun. And it's like, I didn't get paid for it, but it's like, I got paid in, in kind of like feeling good. So feel it's good. Is a, great. You know, that's another form of currency. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a great currency. It is yeah. a, it's such a great currency whenever you're chasing purpose and your mission instead of just money. Cause at a certain point, it's like, I've talked about this before with other guests, like money only goes so far. And there's like studies that show after maybe 70, 75,000 a year, your happiness does not increase dramatically. I mean, maybe there's, there's a difference between, you know, 10 million a year and like 75,000 a year, but you know, 75 to 200,000, I don't know how much that difference really is. You know, you can pay for good life, take some holidays eat out a few times a week, you know, buy any toys that you want, maybe get like rent a luxury car or something like that. Right. So you can have a pretty solid life, but really amazing what you did there for your niece, just in investing in crypto and having some uh, like an asset for her where <laughs> when she's 10, she'll be making a hundred thousand dollars. I didn't make that at 10. That's amazing. <laughs> I was like, your niece is very lucky. <laughs> Most of us smart- do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> So right now you're working with several clients, I assume, running all their their ad campaigns, helping them. Are you creating? Are you coming up with the creatives as well, or are you enlisting their help for the for creating the content, the words, and everything? I'm just curious to know your process. Yes, yeah, so we have we have two different sides. We have our education where we basically train people and let them go and do it with our support and our frameworks, and then we have our done for you side where we have yeah full okay. internal. We've got copywriters, funnel builders, um, media buyers, all that sort of stuff where we basically handle it end to end. So um, we used to enlist a little bit of, I mean, look, if we're getting video, we will still get a client's help because um, I still believe it's like, if you've got a good face of a brand, then it's like, that works way better than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still kind of push push that out and across to people. But um, yeah, if we're um, if we're just doing like images and whatnot, like our yeah, we've got a uh, three person design team, four person media buying team, and two person copywriting team cool. um, that work pretty effectively across um, all of our clients from from a done few side. And yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier because um, yeah. We, we, we know what will work from a direct response standpoint on the platform. So we generally go like, do it all and be like, this is what we're going to run. Some clients want to change it. And I just go, cool. As soon as the client wants to change it, I have no problem with that. But I also means that I take no responsibility for that. So if I didn't create it, it's like, I can, I can be annoyed at myself or my team if we create something and it sucks. But if a client wants it, then I go, hey, I'm not, well, if it doesn't work, it's not none of that blame right. coming towards me like that's because that's that's your that's your prerogative you didn't want to go with my my recommendations like i have been doing this for a while so if if you want to go with it yourself by all means but i just mean that i if it doesn't work no i i take no blame for it so i'm happy right. to take blame if something i do but if it's not then i'm like Mm-mm, no thank you that makes sense because i mean you i always like to trust the experts you know you wouldn't go to your doctor and they'll tell you something's wrong and you're like no it's not <laughs> like they have the right yeah, tools. Yeah. Right. So I think the same thing. I mean, you're kind of like the doctor of these marketing and the ads and stuff. So if someone's never done this before and they only have 50 followers on Instagram or like five friends on Facebook, how are they going to tell you what to do? Or like, no, that's not going to work. Let's change this. Meanwhile, you've grown so many, you know, accounts and businesses from your, your years of experience. So I think that's really important is just making sure when you're going to the experts, let them do their thing, take their advice. They know what they're talking about. Um, so lots of great stuff here. I love it. So is there anything that we're missing in terms of marketing hacks or tips that you recommend for our listeners? Um, anything at all, you know, feel free to, uh, to chime in on whatever you feel is most important in 2021 for marketing. I mean, the big thing is the basics. So you mentioned guys like Dan Kennedy and things like that. And the reason why they're still around, like the ClickFunnels just bought their whole um, company, right? He bought Dan That's Kennedy's cool. life's work. 
um, yeah, at, at the last um, at the last Funnel Hacker, they announced that he um, uh, bought Dan Kennedy's company. Whoa. So those guys, there's a re- there's a reason why uh, people still refer to them while they exist because it's their fundamentals. And if you can get the fundamentals right, it doesn't matter what platform you go on. It doesn't matter if it's like AR, VR, you know, like it doesn't matter if you're promoting a NFT or whatever it is. It's like mm. you're still going to need to implore the fundamental basics. And for me, like when I look at any campaign, the three things that I look at is what the niche is, what the offer is, and what the copy is. I call it the NOC method. So it's like if you can assess those three key areas, if something is not working, one of those three things is not in alignment. One of those three things does not work, does not make sense, is not connecting. So that's where you go back to the drawing board on. So um, I did a, um, a live in a, uh, my Facebook group the other day and I was like, if I was blindfolded and I asked someone for three metrics of their ad account, I could tell if it was working or not. <laughs> without knowing if it was successful, without knowing how many leads or sales they got, I'd ask these three numbers. Um, which are really tied into this NOC method process. And that would pretty much tell me like if their niche is on point, if the offer is on point and copy is on point. Um, Because from a direct response standpoint, when it comes to digital, it's like the numbers directly correlate to the outcome. So it's like, it's, there's no, it's no guessing. It's like, yes, there is still the, obviously the art of persuasion and articulation when it comes to copywriting, Mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a numbers and mass game. So it's like, if you can see how they work together and be like, cool, if this is tied to, if like niche is tied to this number, the offer is tied to this number, copy is tied to this number, they're the only things we need to assess and test and measure. Um, and I can pretty much tell straight away if a campaign is working or not by knowing those those three numbers and knowing what the knowing if the niche offer and copy is is connected. So if you can get those things right, that's where I'm, I implore people to spend their time. Is like don't try and don't spend your time on Facebook or Twitter, YouTube, whatever, in the ads manager, try to set stuff up. It will take you, like my record for setting up an ad is like two minutes and 33 seconds when I was doing like a demonstration at an event. That's I set cool. one up in two minutes. <laughs> but so like from, from a setup perspective, and the reason why I say this, like it's, it doesn't really matter. Like the setup process is easy. You can follow a YouTube video and do that. But understanding who your niche is, why you're targeting them, what your offer is, and writing the copy that's what takes like the few hours, the, the hours of research, the hours of writing, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And it's like, once you get into Facebook, you should be in and out. It should be like 10, 15 minutes in, set it up, it's rolling. Um, albeit sometimes there's some technical issues, but that's pretty quick. But if you can spend the time understanding your niche, what you're offering to them, is it um, irresistible enough for them to want to take an action? And then the copy, then you'll be pretty solid. And then the, the last point I'll, I'll share on that is that most people forget that it's like an ad or a post only has one objective. Most people start and they're putting an ad out there and they're trying to pre-sell their offer and what's going to happen on the next step and the next step and the next step. And it's like, no, no, no. An ad has one objective only is to sell the click. Sell the person to click on that um, ad to go then to the landing page or go then to the sales funnel. Then that's where those things have to do the heavy lifting. But the goal of the first point is just to get them to take an action. So just remembering is that when you do something, like what is the direct next step? That's all that you, you need to try and sell for, um, uh, for lack of a better term there. You're selling that next step for them rather than going, hey, you need to go and like, here's how amazing my product or service is or here's how amazing I am so to follow me. It's like, no, you just need to sell uh, for them to take that next step. Is it to like the post? Is it to give you a follow? Then that's all we've got to do is just go, how do we make that um, work? How do, and that's, you know, well, as I said, we, we turn said this over on Twitter the other day and it's like to be able to get 11,000 uh, followers in a couple of weeks was was great but it's because all I did was put out posts that would be enough for people just to follow they're going to be like oh cool this guy is interesting follow and that that was the, the name of the game and that was and that's why we we're able to achieve it that's so good I wrote that down I mean your your post only has one objective to sell the click to the landing page which then obviously that has to do the heavy lifting so many people they think putting ad spend or boosting a post is going to do it for them. But if it's not a good enough offer, if it's not a good enough, uh, like copywriting, if they haven't taken the time, the hours to develop that, they're going to have a lot of bounces, right? People aren't going to stick. They're not going to take that next step. And so just asking, what is that next step? I really love that. I wrote that down to you're selling the click for lack of a better term. Like you said, that, that is it, is it good enough? And am I, am I interested enough to actually click on this? and then check out the video or whatever the free offer is, right? And then from there, maybe is it good enough to stay on the email list? Is it good enough to check out that webinar? And then you progress throughout the, the funnel. So 
Lots of great stuff here, Kim. I really appreciate you sharing. Where can our audience go to connect with you to learn more, to listen to your podcast? Yeah, easy. Yeah, the best place is probably across on Instagram um, or Facebook. So um, okay. on Instagram, I'm at Real Kim Barrett and I share every um, episode and all the cool stuff we're doing. There's links to our Facebook group and website and everything there. And um, if you're on Facebook or any of the other platforms, most of, most places you can find me at Real Kim Barrett um, somewhere around the internet. So uh, yeah, and then uh, we're, we're always there and sharing stuff across platforms. So you'll be able to be able to find me and track me down. Awesome. I will make sure to link all that up in the show notes. So everyone listening, go connect with Kim, check out the podcast. Uh, lots of great content just from our session today. So I can't imagine like what you share on your podcast as well. Um, really appreciate your time and thank you once again. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey everybody. Thank you so much for being a listener to the show and for checking out my message. If you've been here for a while. I'm especially grateful for you, but if you're new here, thank you once again for being a listener. Just wanted to let you know, I help people buy, sell, or rent real estate across the nation in the U.S. I probably could even help you across the world, but it just gets a little more difficult with time zones and setting up times to chat. If you have any questions at all, shoot me a DM on Instagram. My handle is chrisbello underscore, or you can also go to my website, chrisbello.com slash real estate. Again, that is chrisbello.com slash real estate. Happy to help any way that I can. And thank you once again for being a listener.